Hi, I'm Hollywood. Welcome to my show, Behind the Mask. In life, we wear many masks, our own image editors. There's projection and perception. What happens when we put the mask on and what happens when we take them off? Let's peel the layers and find out. Come take a journey with me behind the mask as I interview some of the most interesting and diverse people in the world of entertainment, art, music, charities, fashion, and more. Are you ready? Hi, I'm Hollywood. Welcome to my show, Behind the Mask. My guest today is a distinguished artist in painting, illustration, and sculpture. As a child, his favorite cartoon character was Charlie Brown. Little did he know he'd become one of the most gifted artists whose work is collected by celebrities and prestigious people around the world. A man who has a passion for art, humility, and a heart of gold when it comes to giving back. Please welcome Chaz Guest. Hi, Chaz. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Great, great. Good, thank you for being here. Well, it's my pleasure. I know I've followed your work for quite a while, but for those people viewing and who haven't uh, become familiar with who you are, can you share a little bit about yourself? My parents were born in the South, and my mother being from Georgia, and my father was born in um, Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, I have nine sisters and brothers all together. We grew up in Niagara Falls, New York. My dad preached in church, and uh, so it was a very spiritual, spiritually connected environment. And at the same time, um, we had uh, access to, to nature, which is, which is very, very, which proved to be uh, very important in my later life. Now, what did you do before painting? You before painting, I started off as a martial artist, you know, at the age of 10 when we left Niagara Falls. My parents divorced, um, my mother moved us to Philadelphia. There, you know, you have to learn how to fight. <laughs> so we started uh, yeah, in, in, the, in the city. And uh, so uh, my brother just had come from um, Okinawa where he was stationed, uh, he was in the Marine Corps. And uh, he, he, uh, he was an amazing martial artist. And uh, so when he came back, he taught us martial arts. So that young part of my life, at 10, I started martial arts, uh, Kyokushin Karate. And uh, so up until 14, and then I started gymnastics. And so I did gymnastics uh, um, up until uh, I graduated from college. Actually, during my um, senior year, um, I was really smitten about fashion illustrating. And, or, or no, or just making clothes, being a fashion designer. And so after graduating, I enrolled myself into the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. And I went to New York. So I really, really was uh, adamant about becoming a fashion designer. Now you were once told you would not make it as an Well, artist, many times, right? even like dating back to my childhood. I mean... Um, that has to be crushing for especially for people that are sensitive to other people's opinions. Well, thank God I'm not. I couldn't give two shits, I mean, I mean two um, <laughs> hoots about people's opinions. And that, that's, uh, that was a gift, you know. And what would you say to people who go through those experiences, being told you can't do it, you're not going to make it? Well, um, I, would, I would say to them, um, this is the beginning process of fi finding self-realization and so you really have to do things for yourself and not to please other people that that's a that's a recipe for disaster i mean in every sense of, uh, of that you should do everything to your own taste and you should you should judge yourself just just you judging yourself and um you know make it a personal a personal um challenge Every day, and so therefore, when someone when someone else will say something to you that is not uh, positive or is not fruitful, if it's not an asset to you, you have to re like really just learn how to put it away, 
because there's so much to reach for. There's so much to reach for. I guess my answer to that, the way that I looked at it, is that that's not positive. I can't <laughs> use that. Exactly. I got to get this other stuff. <laughs> you created Visions of Mexico here in L.A. in which you taught uh, art to the Latino community and you worked with children. There's a really interesting project you did in which you got the kids to paint images of themselves. Mm -hmm. What did you find was the thing that they enjoyed most about doing that? The thing that they discovered was the beauty in themselves. I, I got all of these mirrors, like I said, and I, I uh, canvases and paints, and I had them paint themselves. And um, most of them just said they just love the process of that and never looked at themselves like that. And um, really, I invited them to my exhibition after that I had here. In, in LA and I asked them to bring their paintings that they did and, I, and we set them up in the back of my show in another room and you know, they wore their suits and their little dresses. Aww. It was so very, very <laughs> special. And so, um, you know, I mean, not to put it into some fancy words, but I just like to give kids option to make them feel like they're a part of something that some children are very lonely and without any options, you know, and they want to fit in the group. I want to open that up. But I'm not a teacher. I don't want to come off as I'm, the, I'm an instructor or I'm a professor of art. No, I'm not. I'm just, I, I'm just a, a, a God-fearing, loving person who wants to give these young people a choice. What would you say expands a child's creativity and nourishes them to become successful artists? Well, um, as children, you see, you have this sponge, this beautiful sponge, and as I do with my own son, and if I, as, I done, as I've done with children around the world, in Japan, in Africa, and in Mexico, I just put the material in front of them. And usually I like to use a mirror so that they can look at themselves and, and, and you know, uh, put what they see down on this paper. And um, you see, to open up different options of creativity, children really need that. You know, um, otherwise, you know, I don't, I don't know what you'll get. Well, they you turn know? to violence. Yeah, or whatever, drugs. you know, art saves lives, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, um, um, I like for instance, this goes for, all children around the world. But when I was in Africa, uh, we were on our way to the president's home. And uh, you have to go through the jungle, it's one road. And I heard children laughing and carrying on. And to just be really short, I, I asked to stop the car and I got out and I went in there and sure enough, there are all of these children running around and they were chasing chickens and some are doing, <laughs> just, some are making crushing rice and doing just doing their thing. And, uh, and there, I, I got some sticks, and I started drawing with these kids who never saw art at all. Oh. They live in the sticks. They live in the jungle, you know, in these mud houses. And there I began with my quest to bringing this You're imagination out of earth. children. Yeah, we were drawing with sticks. But I will be taking art supply over there. They've never seen a canvas or paint or anything. Just like, I, just like um, you know, it's, it's a difference. It, when I was in Japan, for instance, or in Mexico, they have access to these things. But still, the same thing is there whereby you have this person that is, um, that is um, you know, putting that option forward. I, I didn't have that, so I want to give it to another little human being and see what they're going to grow up to be. They, they, I raise a few Picassos, you know. <laughs> I mean, because if you have it early, can you imagine? Future get a chess guest. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so they can begin to explore this creative process. Who are some of your greater influences in, in your work that you've done? In my work, you see, I don't find a lot of inspiration in um, probably other artists, uh, more Mentors. so with people, mm -hmm. like, uh, like Paul Robeson to start out with. I mean, he has an amazing influence. For me because when I would read about him and unfortunately I found out about him later like about uh, 17 or 18 and this man um, he's unparalleled uh, 
up until this day. I mean, he, he really used himself as a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, because here is a man who was an activist, an opera singer, not only an opera singer, but a singer that was rewarded in England for his diction of doing Othello in the 30s and 40s and uh, come back to America, fight for civil rights, had his passport taken from the United States government. And this is how badass he was. Because he couldn't <laughs> fly, he did a concert on the American side of Niagara Falls and sold out in Canada across the water. Now that's impressive. That's how bad yeah. he was. <laughs> and he was big. He was a barrister. He was a lawyer, barrister, a, uh, a graduate of Columbia, cum laude, and uh, was told uh, he couldn't do his law because of his color. And so, but that was a blessing, you see, because that gave us Paul Robeson. Well, thank you for sharing that thought. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to take a closer look at some of Chaz's work including a painting highlighting one of the most influential people in the world. This is Hollywood, and we'll be right back here on Behind the Mask. Hi, welcome back to Behind the Mask. I'm taking an in-depth look at the world of art with artist Chaz Guest. Now, I've been very blessed to see a lot of your work and even some in the making. But for those of you who have not had the privilege, Chaz is going to share some very special pieces with us. And here we have uh, Obama. Tell us uh, a little bit about this and how, how, why, how did this come about? Um, well, I was, at, I was invited to a fundraiser by uh, Maddie and Michael Lawson, who are very um, dear friends of mine, but more so, uh, they are they're collectors of my uh, work. They're one of the first people who's, who started collecting my work here in Los Angeles. And uh, through the years, we became friends. And um, of course, they were one of the um, one of the couples that really supported um, President Obama when he was still a senator. And so um, during one of those uh, fundraisers um, at their home, um, I met then Senator uh, Barack Obama. And I was just um, really taken um, how, how concentrated he was when he spoke to people and how only you existed when you were talking to him. It wasn't like a political kind of a thing like it is. Not, you know, I've seen all of that grow. But um, I was quite fascinated with the, with the way that he thought. And I took a mental picture of that. You know, and I and I, I wanted to paint that, you know, because I, I had a strong feeling that he would he would become president, and uh, and so I kept that mental picture, and I and I started, and this this painting was really a growing process, because if you look close, you'll see red, white, and blue. It started. I painted the American flag in the back, then I put him there. And then I had another idea of going on top of that. You see? I noticed the writing, yeah. which I and have seen this, but, but only yeah. digitally. I had not seen it yeah. live like this. And what, what, it, and what, what, in, what inspired that writing? Um, you know, he did a speech on race, you know, when they were on him about that Jeremiah Wright kind of a thing. And um, then he came back. He did that beautiful, beautiful speech on, on, um, on race. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And he started out as, you know, we the people and that whole thing. And I, I, I was just, I thought that that was just so, so beautiful. So it is the whole way. Well, it, it says, it, it says the whole thing in the back. And then at the bottom, I put Monk, Miles, Coltrane, Mozart, you know, Einstein. Yeah, I just started naming just brilliant people. What's the most important thing an artist focuses on when painting someone famous and their likeness? Because a lot of celebrities are very particular about their image. Well, first off, I, I, I don't get into the celebrity and the, the fame thing of, of, you know, when I'm painting. I mean, I could paint, um, you know, I, I approach a painting if they happen to be, you know, celebrated the same way I would do a homeless person mm -hmm. or, or anyone. I mean, so that, that's not really a factor. Um, but, um, but I go about getting the soul of the person. 
um, that's why I generally start with painting the eyes first, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I noticed yeah, the and then, the, 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 you know, then I let the eyes help me to tell the story of the person, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I do portraits of people, I, 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 I hope that they're interesting in some way, you know, to me, mm -hmm. personally. Um, so, um, someone like this painting, like this painting, I, I, I was just really after capturing that moment of high concentration and he was in charge of his surrounding. And now as time goes on, this was done in those seven. So all of these years later and, and his experience in the White House, it, it took on manning a ship of treacherous waters. He's in the front of the boat, you know what I mean? And it's like he's, you know, he's navigating the, the ocean. You know? Now, what did he think of this? Has, has he... um, well, actually, uh, Maddie Lawson, she took a photograph that I had done of it, mm. too. We were all at a fundraiser at Oprah Win Winfrey's house. And um, she showed him this, a picture of this painting. And he just said to her, tell Chaz to hold on to this. Oh. That's why it's still here in my studio. <laughs> I don't know doing. what the, now, you have what's going to happen hanging with in, it. in the White House. Yeah. What, which one is that? Uh, that is of Thurgood Marshall. Actually, if truth be told, a friend of mine stopped by and said, you should paint Thurgood Marshall. I was like, why? Then I thought about it. And I'm like, of course. Yeah, Great why idea. not? Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's not like that was the first time I painted them. I had painted them before. And so I painted them and uh, look where it found itself. Now, who haven't you painted that you would love to paint? You. <laughs> um, let's I see. Would be honored. No, I, I, was that, uh, you know, I don't get that much into portraiture. No. 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 I mean, um, people are, you know, if I if I'm asked to do it, I, I will. Mm -hmm. You know what? I would love to paint. Well, I've created a superhero. You'll mm -hmm. be hearing about that soon enough, and I will be putting that on canvas. But I had an idea recently where I, I want to paint large size black women but black the hue like really beautiful black color mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> just Almost large like in the old days like the, the the you know in the museums we see the women were very robust back then uh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. but even more so and, and and i say black for a reason because you know we're not represented that much in painting mm -hmm. and i think that when the hundreds of years go by i would like to put my contribution <laughs> <laughs> I think you've into, put a lot of contributions into <laughs> people of color you know yeah. um, and um, and I just thought about that because uh, uh, you know I mean not that she's like large and I said but you know who fits that is Jill someone like Jill Scott mm -hmm. but even darker than, than she is mm -hmm. you know like yeah. yeah that that's a thought that I had you know if I'm if I'm to do people, but but I love painting, uh, you know, uh, things more so than people. Movement. Movement, Movement. and sound. Music, yeah, sound. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Well, much. thank you for sharing this with yeah, us. You're welcome. Yeah, these yeah. are beautiful pieces. Thank you. Hi, this is Hollywood. Welcome back to Behind the Mask. We're taking a look at some of Chaz's work. And Chaz, you uh, lived in Mexico for almost eight months. How did uh, living in Mexico inspire you to create this? Mexico, as you know, it's an amazingly surreal and very deep place. It's very layered with uh, the Mayan culture, Aztec, the European influence, and everything like that. But for this particular painting, um, you know, I saw a dog. This is a Shola Squinkle dog. It's a Mayan ancient dog that they're breeding now. It was the most beautiful, ugliest creature I've ever seen what in my life. What is it called again? Shola Squinkle. Shola Squinkle. Yeah, Shola Squinkle. <laughs> that's the name of it. And, um, you know, I said, I want to paint this dog. So basically, um, to bring the Mexican feeling into it, I saw this little Mexican guy weaving some baskets out of straw. So I had my friend ask him because I don't, unfortunately, I don't speak a lot of Spanish. I had I had my friend ask him would he make this is the size I love to paint forty eight by forty eight. So um, 
so they um, asked him if he would like weave me a few of these, and he did. See, this is straw. This is beautiful. I'm noticing that the texture. Hmm. And I love the repetition of it because it reminds me of John Coltrane, you know, that musical repetition, that hypnotic thing. So I love yes. the, the continuity and the rhythmic thing that it gives me. And so I had to treat this straw, of course, with, um, I used to use, you see, 15 years ago, I would have used rabbit skin glue. I would have spent 13 hours <laughs> cooking this stuff. But now they have this stuff called PVA, which I, I treat it and then I gesso it. And then it could uh, withstand and well hold my oil paint through for hundreds and hundreds of years. And you know, I, I I went about you know creating this painting, you know, with these fast lines of enamel paint, and, and I filled in the spirit of this dog. One thing that really struck me about this dog, the large ears, and they were so erect and attentive. I, um, that was the first thing, one of the first things that I started with, but. I wanted to start with the eyes because when I first saw the dog and I went, <laughs> you know, he sort of looked up at me and I was like, that is what I want to capture right there. And those eyes were so attentive and so piercing. I think that this is a successful painting. I think I, I was able to like really capture what I wanted. I think you did capture it. it. You captured it well. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> a lot goes into creating art before you see it in its full form. One of those things are the materials an artist uses to create these incredible pieces. Next up, Chaz is going to show us some of the tools he uses. So tell me what some of these tools are. Okay, this is where I do all of my, uh, all my experimenting. Experimenting, okay. <laughs> so when I start a painting, I usually start with ink, right? And this ink is not any ordinary ink, just to be insured. This is um, this is cuttlefish ink, and it's made in it's prepared in Germany. You know, so they squeeze all of the cuttlefish. It's getting more and more expensive because they're, of course, it's cuttlefish. Like, is yeah, it a, this ink from comes fish? from cuttlefish. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And uh, and it's a beautiful hue of uh, brown. That that I start with. But when I'm doing large canvases, I usually just use sumi ink from Japan. But basically, okay, look, I use the best paint that I can find. This here is David Davis. Yeah, paint. I was going to ask you, how do you know what tools when you're well, going, if you're if selecting you're, uh, how to what what products are best? If you're a novice at it and you just really want to know, you can feel the weight of the paint. You just feel how heavy? Oh yeah, that's quite heavy, right? And this is almost done. Feel how heavy that is. Oh my goodness, See? it is. And uh, these are paints with a with a huge pigment in it, and this is a cheap paint. I'll show you the difference. Um, look, this is a cheap paint. So it weighs. Look, I can't show you the cover because I want to embarrass. Oh, you're the right. You're right. <laughs> but you feel, feel the difference. And then mo some of the time no, I. What is this? This the, some of the time I grind my own paints. I use this is pure pigment. This is a beautiful color. My superhero will be this color. This is Egyptian blue. Oh, look at that. It's pure pigment. Colors. And you get yourself colors. a nice piece of glass. And then you use this grind, this muller, you know. Um, mo like almost right. like and when you're you grinding muller. So it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a half an hour, and I and I mix the linseed oil with it, with this, and go circular and, the okay. and then you get this paste like this, right? But basically, you know, I use um, the best paints I could find, and this is from China. So I had to really do a lot of looking around when I was in China. Now, what do paints cost? Very expensive, they're, depending they're, on the hue. Okay, depending on the color. This is a tube of a million. This usually costs about eighty dollars. How do how do you how do you create other colors? You want to see something fascinating? Yeah. Okay, so like brown. I use a lot of brown, of course, because I have this beautiful pigment. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Latino my flesh tone, gone my white. flesh tone color, right? <laughs> so, like, this is this is um, a lizarding crimson. Okay. It's a red, right? Oh, I'm gonna be beautiful. stingy with it, right? And this is a sap green. You're at eighty dollars a tube. I would be too. Because <laughs> I'm not gonna use it. I'm just gonna show you, right? Just like that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so, if I'm doing my color, my flesh tone. So it's a. a Crimson and kind of like a green. Alizarin crimson mm -hmm. and sap green. And sap right? green. And this here 
is a yellow ochre, right? Yellow ochre. So underneath my skin, underneath the flesh tone, you put that, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see. And then you have that. But I'm not going to show you. But I'm just going to show you that this is the um, the um, yellow ochre. That's what mm -hmm. I would start my skin mm -hmm. tone with, all right? All right. All right. And um, check this out. Now, this red and this green will make the richest brown that you ever want to see. Oh. That's the richest. It almost looks black to me. No, no, no. That's because you can't see. <laughs> true this is the richest brown that you ever gonna oh, get there, I see it, now. see it now I like deep, that dark beautiful chocolate brown chocolate Hershey beautiful brown <laughs> and, Delicious and what, brown. what what you would do you 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 go you know you do your outline with this br uh, brown and okay. and then you blend it in and uh, oh my gosh that. you know you blend it in and and you'll have your 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 color, you know. See the red and the green. Okay, so that's how you get your brown, your richest brown. I love it. Now, if I wanted to get a lighter brown, or don't a mix brown. don't mix white with it or something. If you're thinking that, no. what would I mix with? What it? a lighter brown. Well, a lighter brown. Mm, well, I use burnt umber for the next and then a red umber but for a lighter brown I'd probably well you see that's why you start with yellow ochre mm -hmm. then you use turpentine to like take off the top layer and then a little bit of this brown will be on top of this dry yellow ochre and it'll be lighter how do you get the right skin tones for uh, fair people you mean white people yeah white people okay you mean okay so <laughs> first I would start with white uh, I would start with the titanium white okay and the ivory black, and I would mi mix a nice fine gray, and I would Ooh. paint the entire body gray, with different light light areas, dark areas, and then that dries, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, go, you then you can mix a, a raw sienna. You can mix a raw sienna That's a with color. with a, a little bit of this. Um, oh, here it is. This here that I'm running out, and this is another expensive tube. This is a um, cadmium red. Cadmium red. Cadmium red, red right? Beautiful. Now watch this. That almost looks like coral lipstick. Watch this. Okay, so look. Don't mix a lot because it's too hot. Mm-hmm. But right? Look. Okay, now watch this. If you if you if you mix this like that, let's see, show you a little more. I won't be stingy with this one. Alright, so be careful not to get so hot with it. Mm-hmm. And then that's Look at this. That you're not you're you're Latin, but yeah, you know. No, it matches. So, I wish I but, was that color. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. And then you have. Hang That's on. That's like the me. spray tan color. This is here to my. See, that I'm most comfortable like this. Okay, this is a titanium white, right? Now watch this. And now you have gray underneath. Right. Then you mix a little white. Look at that. Oh my. You see that? Mm-hmm. And then you can get lighter and lighter. It's like a beige. Yeah, you get the beige, the different levels of beige mm -hmm. tones. And then here, look how close that. Well, oops. oops you don't want to do that. <laughs> well, I get that off later. Don't That's worry. Okay. You don't want that on the diamond, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, so watch this. Look. So you have that dark. Wow. You see that? That is neat. And then a little bit more, if it's hotter red. Watch mm -hmm. this. More than like the Indian tone, skin mm. tone. It's hard to see on the wood, but you see that I flesh see tone? It. Yeah. And what I like to do, I like to put, you know, um, yellow o ochre with a little white. Mm -hmm. And then I will have the, the lightest skin tone. So the really fair mm -hmm. white, white, white. Mm hmm. Wow. What you are some that? of the basic colors? If I wanted to put an artist kit together, what are some of the basic oh. colors? that I could get, especially at $80 or two, what what would be ideal to start with? Well, what you would want to do is in, the, is, in, is in the rainbow. You just have to l l wait until it rains and you look up in the sky and there is the <laughs> rainbow right there. Your and rainbow you have, color wheel. You have yellow, you have red, you have um, blue, 
Is, and you is have this green. Items? You have this here. Yeah. Is this you have those colors. So and then cute. a lot of those colors, Hazel. they mix the. Um, so cool. A lot of those colors you mix with um, each other. And they mm -hmm. make all the co other colors. So you could get a little mini kit like this? You, you can. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why not? You make you make that guy very happy. And what's this here? Is a little. That is what I put my water in. Oh, that's so cool. That's what, see the skin skin now? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's I how it works. I love it. Beautiful. Painting is magic. It's wonderful. It is magic. Magical. So, Chaz, I have yes. a question for you. Okay. If you could never be an artist or ever paint again, yeah. what would you do? Well, I actually know how to do a lot of things. I love to cook. I love to, I love music. But I want to live the rest of my life to become the, the greatest artist that, that I can be. So I really have to put those things aside and really, really hone my life as a painter. Okay, but we're taking mm. your, your painting away. Okay, Minus so what would I be? What would oh, you be? Oh boy, I'd be one <laughs> confused soul, that's for sure. <laughs> but I think um, because I love eating, I'd probably be a chef. I'd be a damn good chef, you know? Because I love to eat, and I love to and see people to eat. And I love to And I love to cook, yeah. But cooking is like painting. Most painters can cook. I'll have to take that in Yeah, because you're totally mixing ingredients, right? Yeah. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. but I learned how to cook from my grandmother and my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. So I, it's, it's in me. I love, I love it. I Painting. would become one of the greatest chefs in the world. Painting is like cooking. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for, for sharing this. Here's now, how much is this worth if I... Well, you hold on to that. It might be a million dollars. Especially the palette. <laughs> yeah, but it needs... That's our show for today. I want to thank the incredibly talented and gifted Chaz guest. Thank you for joining me on Behind the Mask. Really was a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much for coming. Now, tell us where we can find your work. Well, I'll be participating in Art Basel this December in Miami and um, hopefully uh, we're working on something special for Art Dubai which will be in November. So as you heard if you're in Miami later this year be sure to check out Chaz's work at Art Basel or if you're in Dubai at Art Dubai. Other than that you can check out his website at chazguest.com or on Facebook. For more information on the show and my guests, go to BehindTheMask.tv. And now, I leave you with some homilies from my late World War II veteran, mentor, and acting coach, Ivan Marcota. You can't always expect a certain result, but you can always expect to do your best. In spirit, inspired, you are creative. Always remember what you're good at and stick with it. Until next time, live, love, and laugh. This is Hollywood, over and out.